Hello, this is Joe, and welcome back to the channel. You know, I've had a lot of people ask me how I put my stars back in my starless images. I've done a few videos on how to remove the stars from your images using StarNet, Star Exterminator, but I guess I really haven't done any to put them back together. That's what we're gonna do in today's video, so let's get started. So real quick, for those of you who are just looking for the answer as to how to put the stars back in your image in PixInsight, um, we're going to open up the starless image uh, from my last video and then we're going to open up the stars that I created. And what I normally do is I kind of just put this image over the other image and get a kind of a feel for okay this is enough stars or this is still too many stars or whatnot. And then we just go into pixel math and we go to the expression editor and we find the lower starless which is that's what I've called this image but whatever the starless image is um, so here's lowers or lowers starless and we'll double click that and then we'll uh, hit the plus key and then we'll find the star image which I believe was image for stars and we'll double click that we'll click OK and here in pixel math you'll see that we have this expression which is lower starless plus image for stars. Then we'll create a new image so that in case we don't like it, we can continue to um, edit these other two files and try and uh, recombine them. So we'll create new image and we'll apply that. And here's the image that we get. And this is the actual image that I ended up using for my video. And the stars are enough that you get the feeling of space but not so much that you can't really see the nebula and uh, for comparison I'm just gonna pull up this this is the image right after I combined the the sulfur hydrogen and oxygen masters together and as you can see there's quite a few more stars in this image than there is in this one uh, let me put them side by side so that you could see better but I don't even think you need to, <laughs> that I need to, you could see right away that there's quite a bit more stars in this image. That's how you put them back together. And if you want to stick around, I'm going to show you some things that I do to my stars depending on the image and how to go back and fix some of your old images before you started removing stars from them. So we're going to recall our image that we had. And this is still in linear state. It's not been stretched yet. And we're going to remove the stars using Star Exterminator. If you don't have or don't want to spend the money on Star Exterminator, um, you can use StarNet and it's free. The only difference is with StarNet, well there's a couple differences. Um, one, it doesn't work as well and it leaves artifacts. But again, it's free. So what can you expect from that? Um, the big difference though is that it, it needs a stretched image in order to work. It won't work in a linear image. So I'm just going to show real quick with Star Exterminator, if you generate the star image and it's in linear form, you would check mark these boxes, you apply it, and I've already done that, so I'm going to minimize this, and what you would get is this. You would get your um, starless image, and you would get your star field. Now, unfortunately, you can't just screen stretch the star field because uh, PixInsight just stretches it too much. So what you'd want to do is manually stretch it with the histogram. And here is where you need to be careful about how many stars you want to put back in your image. So if you, you know, we grab this and start to pull it in, you can see the stars start to pop out. And it depends on how many stars you really want. I mean, you know, that's too much, of course. And this is about as much as there was normally in it. I'm moving it slightly as I go. And I think this is about where we would want, oh, well, maybe a little bit more than that, maybe right here. And, you know, we could apply this. And then what I do, um, we'll reset and close this. And, what I do to the image from here is I'd like to get rid of all the green stars that are in here. I mean, I don't know if you could see that very well, but there are some um, greenish looking stars 
Um, oh, there's, yeah, right here. Let's see, and what we'll do is, is we run it as CNR at 100, and we apply it with the green color to remove the green color. And now our stars are more yellow. And then the next thing we need to do is remove the magenta stars. And there are some magenta stars in here. Um, not as many as I normally get in a typical SHO image, but there still are some. So in order to remove the magenta, we just uh, invert this image and then we apply this again with green and you'll see that the image does change ever so slightly in this particular image and then we could invert it back and now all of the green and magenta stars have been removed the next step is to try and bring some of the blue back because when you do a SHO image you really don't get blue stars and if you look it, it's pretty tough to see some blue stars in here um, you'll see a little bit like right here um, let me see if I could zoom in over here on that yeah you'll see like this is a was pretty much probably a blue star and if I was to take this in RGB they would pop out a lot better and that's another option that you have if you want to just take a, a few shots in, in RGB and combine them together and just remove the stars and then put them into your SHO image it's just a matter of uh, spending another maybe hour of imaging time to get your RGB stars but so what I'll do from here is I'll go into curves and all I'm gonna do is go to saturation and pull the saturation up now I'm gonna exaggerate it here for you so that you can see what happens but you should start to see a lot more blue as you can see so it is grabbing the blue that's in there and pulling it out but of course you don't want it to look funny so you don't want to pull it out a lot so I would just you know grab it a little bit but it is making a difference it's it's very slight and subtle but it is there and of course the better scope that you're using the less chromatic aberration you're gonna see when you combine all your images together uh, I do have a doublet so you might see a little bit here and there um, it really depends uh, also, uh, during the editing process, you're going to get a little bit of that no matter what happens. So even if you've got a, a really fine instrument, if you try and produce these color stars out of SHO palette, you're still going to get a little bit of that no matter what. So I mean, the best option is to take some RGB frames for your stars. So that looks good to me there. I'm going to go ahead and apply this, and then we'll close this up and... For all intents and purposes, here's our star field. It's the same one that I used for uh, my final image in the video. And from there, I would just you know roll it up over here and save it while I continue to work on my main image. So now let's say that you have some old images, like I do before you were removing the stars, and you wanna go back and remove stars and see what you can do with those images. So I have a image here of the Tulip Nebula. And it's got lots of stars in it. I wasn't removing the stars. And Star Exterminator would still work here. You would just turn off the linear and you would keep the star image. And of course, if you don't have Star Exterminator, because this is already stretched, and it's even a JPEG, it's not even a TIFF or anything, that you could still use StarNet on it. Now with StarNet, it is free. And the only thing that you have to do is make sure that you populate your RGB weight file and your grayscale weight file. And I usually run mine on a stride of 64. Um, it does default to 128. And then you can create the star mask. Um, you will get some artifacts with StarNet, but it's still it's free. So I highly recommend it along with the Star Exterminator if you can afford or want to afford that. So what you end up with after you run one of these two programs is your starless image and your stars now what we can do to reduce these stars because it's already stretched we've got two options really and only one that, that I really like um, you could take the morphological transformation tool and just the way it is by default and you could run it I usually run it between two and four times. You can change the iterations right here. I mean, I can go straight to three iterations if I wanted to and just apply it. But what I do is I just you know, drag this over here 
and I hit it once and that's still too many stars so I'm gonna hit it again um, it's looking a lot better uh, I'm gonna hit it one more time see and that's pretty good right there I don't think I want to hit it a fourth time um, so this is just the way that I do it to to keep that uh, it, it's really per taste while you're looking at the other image over here and if you want to get an idea you can just put this image over this one okay so the other way to do this so we're going to make a clone of this so that we can see it again and I'm going to minimize it for a moment and then we're going to undo the morphological transformations that we made on this and we'll show you another way that is possible to do this. Um, actually, it's to, uh, you could either use the histogram transformation or you could use the curves. It's really gonna be almost exactly the same thing. Um, so we'll just go with the curves and what you can do is just slightly pull down uh, on your RGB curve. And you'll see that the stars start to go away and you could pull it down until you're happy with where the stars are. So maybe right there. And apply, close that. So this is what it looked like with the, let me just minimize this and pull this over here. This one right here that I have highlighted at the moment was the morphological transformation. And you could see that the bigger, brighter stars are still present where the one where we pulled them down using curves, and this is the same with the histogram I've tried in the past, um, we really didn't get that. And what instead we got was a lot of the dead pixels that were covered by the dark frames that aren't showing up in here. So, you know, unfortunately, if you haven't removed your stars in the linear state, you really don't have the option of using curves or the histogram transformation to move to lighten up your stars or not and you're kind of forced into another way like the morphological transformation there might be some other ways but this is just just the way i do it my issue that i have with the morphological transformation however is that if you notice in here it leaves some really weird um i don't know what you'd call them maybe they're artifacts but you see how they're the little squigglies and and it, to me, that's just strange. And that all comes from the morphological transformation. If, if we zoom into this image here, you won't see any of that. So you have to be aware of that as well. Um, and I'm sure that you could change some settings in here. I just use the defaults. Uh, maybe you'd want a different structuring element or maybe you want a different operator. Um, there, there's a lot of tools, but this is. I just wanted this to be a quick video, but I also did want to point that out that if you're wondering, hey, where did all these little squiggly lines come from? It, it was from that. And so again, uh, we'll just, for fun, we're going to put this together. So we've got our Tulip Nebula. Um, I believe this is the clone. We've also got our stars. So we'll run Pixel Math and the Expression Editor. And we'll find the Tulip Nebula and this is just gonna be, uh, we can use the clone, that's fine. And then we're going to add it to the stars. Hit okay, and come down here and say create new image, and apply that. And now I'll bring up the original image with all the stars, and we could look together and compare them. And as you can see, this one over here, even though it's not perfect and we've got squigglies and whatever else on here. It still looks better uh, until you start to zoom in. So if you're not gonna pixel peep, I think you're still gonna be just fine. This is still make a decent uh, Instagram or Twitter post. Um, of course, I'd clean this up a lot more. Again, very old imaging. Um, and uh, it's funny to go back and look at your processing skills from a few years ago to what you're currently producing today. Well, I hope you found that tutorial useful. If so, please go ahead and hit that like button for me. And for a great video on how to edit your starless images before recombining them, go ahead and click this video right here.